Welcome back to another Outdoor Philosophy here on Switched to Linux. And we are starting a new book today. Uh, we're going to be doing Building a Bridge to the 18th Century by Neil Postman. Uh, this has been on my shelf for probably about a decade and I've wanted to read it. So, uh, sounds good. Uh, so first, who is Neil Postman? Uh, Neil Postman is uh, a sociologist slash philosopher of around... Uh, the 80s, 90s, he's popular. I think he may have since passed away, but I can't remember for sure. Um, but he has done a lot of really fabulous works. And the reason he's an author everyone should know about and should probably read is he has some of the best thought on some social issues we can imagine. Uh, for example, um, you know, of, of course, following this channel, you know of 1984. Of course, you know, this government, these spy type world. And of course, uh, you may or may not be aware of uh, another book by Aldous Huxley called The Brave New World, which is essentially the same world as 1984, only instead of it being a outward government oppression, it is a personal oppression. We uh, choose to willingly oppress ourselves through our stupor of entertainment and amusements. And the reality is that's a little bit closer where we are. We see government spy programs and we're like, oh, 1984. But reality is we're a little close to that brave new world, but neither one of those models does it perfectly. Well, Neil Postman did in the, uh, it was uh, probably the, the mid 80s, he did a book called Amusing Ourselves to Death, which was an album of both of those philosophies, 1984 Merge with Brave New World. So maybe we'll cover that book in detail another time. Um, but uh, Postman's general view, he's one of the people who took a strong stance against a lot of your digital entertainment. Um, he took a strong stance against, uh, I, and I remember when, you know, when we were kids, I was a kid uh, in the, um, uh, I don't know, 80s, 90s, whatever, and um, we started to have things like, you know, we had Reading Rainbow. Let me know if you, if you remember Reading Rainbow. And, you know, basically these days the kids look forward to, you go into class, and instead of class, they wheel in that TV on the cart, you know, <laughs> big TV, and they play these horrible 80s PBS flicks that are supposed to be these edutainment -y type things. And Neil Postman did an analysis in Amusing Ourselves to Death and also in another book called uh, The Disappearance of Childhood, where he he talked about the, the fact that we can learn from sources like this, but unless we sit down and actually do the work, we can get a good overview, but we can never get the breadth. And as a former teacher and professor, I fully support that view because the problem is, is that with all of the computer entertainment, the technology capabilities, we have the ability to, to watch some animated videos to see how things work together. Like I was in the molecular fields right at that time when CDs started to become included in a lot of textbooks. You could pop the CD in the computer, install some sketchy software and, and watch some protein animations of, you know, you, you get your little enzymes going into your proteins and unlock locking or locking things, you know, all of these types of receptor models where the 3D art would, be, would go there and you'd have little things you'd pop in the back in, in your computer and you could watch uh, DNA synthesis and, and, you know, degradation and all this kind of stuff. What Postman argued is that a lot of the various things that uh, that are he he talked about is that we can learn a little bit like we can learn some some surface level stuff but we never get a depth of anything learning that way and I know that myself as a person who used to sit down and work out my problems that's how I learned the stuff so well and as a person who used to teach online academic software I'll tell you that uh, even even the best online academic software pales in comparison to a student sitting down and doing the problems on paper because it's too easy to just write chicken scratch because the all every one of them with no exception and I was in the field I can rattle them all off to you you in the chemistry field we had mastering chemistry we had owl uh, we had sapling you know all of these things they all had this they all had the the main problem and that's that you input an answer well the answer isn't the final thing it's the process that makes you learn and that's one of the things postman talks about is that it's the process he's he's a person who goes back to 
a time when we would think, when we would rationalize, when we would utilize logic. Obviously, there are some flaws in his argument and his approach. Uh, because he's pretty much looks at the 18th century, of course, building a bridge to the 18th century. And this might be one of his very last books. It's actually written a lot later than I thought it was. It was 1999. I'm getting them in there, and he's talking about about email and internet and stuff. I'm like, I didn't know this book was that new, <laughs> and it was. It was 1999. Um, so 99. So this is almost a 20 year old book we're going to be looking at. Um, so with all that being said. He makes an argument saying, you know, there were atrocities at all times, but the best time period ever was the 18th century. He's an enlightenment guy. Um, when, and I reject any of these philosophies outside of scripture as being the source of, you know, the, the source of our, uh, of our choice. Now, of course, he is also a member of kind of a dying breed of the modernist view that just believe that if we can move beyond all our old superstition, gain ourselves the intellect and move forward, we can solve all of our problems with rationality and thinking. And that doesn't solve the problem either. You can check out my other channel for what I think solves that problem. Uh, but we're not going to dive into that here. What we're going to do is an analysis of the book Building a Bridge to the 18th Century. So I'll put a link to the, uh, to the Amazon affiliate link down below. I encourage you to pick up a copy, read it, read it, and follow along. Um, once again, I'll be doing one video a week. And I think there's nine chapters in here. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's, a, and there's nine chapters and three appendices. So I'm not sure if we're going to actually do an analysis on the appendices or not. So we will either do, you know, nine, 10 or 14 or 15 videos on this book, uh, over the course of the next, next couple of months. So if you're looking for a good summer read, this is, this is a good one. Postman is, is easy to read yet intellectual. It is very well reasoned and thought out. Obviously it's not perfect. Like I said, um, but we're going to kind of dive into this. And the first thing that I really enjoyed, I, I enjoyed parts of his introduction, uh, actually, because what he starts talking about is uh, his overall premise for the introduction and for this book as an entirety is that we need to look back into our past to evaluate where we might be going. Uh, as Rush writes, um, and I forget the exact song, it's on the album Presto, I believe. You know, history is a new wrinkle we are doomed to repeat. And that's not a an uncommon thing to, to hear about, um, about how we're going to, you know, if we don't remember where you came from, you are doomed to repeat it. And this is why it's a bad thing that a lot of groups, like for example, in, in Germany, it's generally not really open, allowable conversation to discuss the atrocities of the Holocaust. The problem is if we don't learn from those mistakes of the past, and we won't if we suppress it, we will make those same mistakes again because we as people have been doing the same things and the same patterns for centuries and centuries and centuries. We're not at some new ultimate cusp. All we have achieved is newer means to destroy ourselves and others. And that's the scary part about it. Uh, as we talked about about it a couple times this last week on that the Google's you know ledger. You know, Google as a company wants to control people. That is a scary thing. And nothing echoes. And of course I quoted this before from uh, Ravi Zacharias, um, but it actually it turns out that Ravi Zacharias pulled it from another person, uh, where they they talk about um, our improved technology is an in. R Ravi Zacharias says this is our improved technology is rather improved means to our deteriorating ends. And another philosopher actually said the exact same thing, only he said it slightly different. Um, I'm trying to find that spot real quick. Um, it's essentially the same thing, but it's just uh, slightly different um, wording. If I spot it, I'll let you know. I thought I had marked it, but I did not. <laughs> I'm trying to mark the book this time so I can find stuff quicker. Um, but anyway, that's the that's the the problem. That's that's where we are. Is we utilize our our great improvements are great technologies not for the betterment of mankind more often but for its detriment instead because that's the human nature and that's why i have another channel where i talk about the solutions <laughs> so um with that being said uh he also looks at both kierkegaard and um uh, uh satiana uh i forgot i can't pronounce that that 
that one's name. Um, George uh, Santiana, I think. Uh, famous aphorism. Uh, the one tells us if we forget the past, we are doomed to relive it. Uh, can we ever forget the past? Is it possible to plan a future without thinking about it, without reference to the past? Now, Kierkegaard, uh, Kierkegaard suggests that there is nothing in the future to see except something from the past, and he invites us to be quite careful. So, of course, the two, these two philosophies are very similar in that, um, uh, in that he the one of them is looking at the past and say we got to learn it so we don't re repeat our mistakes the other philosopher is looking and saying we need to go into our past to learn what really worked and both of those are things we need to embrace and so he wrote this book with that spirit of what is it uh what is it we're going to embrace so he he wants to both learn from the past so we don't mis don't repeat the, the atrocities, but we also want to learn from the past so we can do the things that were good. So I think we're actually going to wrap up the introductory video here. I think there was a lot there to be said. Uh, that's the introduction. It's a page and a half. Um, and we're going to dive into next week. We're going to dive into chapter one where he makes the argument, albeit I think it's personally a little bit flawed, but he does make the argument that a bridge to the 18th century. We need to look at the 18th century, which of course is the century of enlightenment to solve our, our modern problems. Of course, I disagree with the overall premise, but I like a lot of the analysis analysis and interpretation. He's asking a right question. He's proposing a solution. Let's see where his solution takes us because I have not read all of the books. So um, it'll be, uh, be a fascinating trip. So thanks for coming along for this outdoor philosophy at Switched to Linux. Uh, you can help support the channel at switchlinux.com forward slash support. We'll show you all of the ways to help support the channel. Um, you can pick up a t-shirt like this one with my cat on it. Um, you can pick up the cat t-shirt, uh, coffee cups, and other things at shop.switchtolinux.com. And uh, there's also a Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. So thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.